Good evening and welcome to News Review. The airport access tunnel project will go ahead. The government has been entirely successful in its legal battle against OHL. The High Court of Justice of England and Wales ordered that OHL, the company whose contract was terminated in 2011 by the previous GST administration, now pay the government the completion costs of the project, potentially the largest claim for damages in Gibraltar's history. Chief Minister Fabian Picardo also revealed that the government also intends to recover legal costs. The judgment delivered by Mr. Justice Ackenhead at the High Court of Justice rules that the Gibraltar government was correct in the way it terminated the contract with OHL in the summer of 2011. It's now entitled to recover all costs associated with the termination and completion costs of the project over and above OHL's original contract price. The government has been found to have terminated the contract correctly on the 20th of August 2011. Additionally, the effect of that finding is that we are entitled to recover from OHL in accordance with clauses 15.3 and 15.4 of the contract, and you'll see these specifically referred to in the judgment, essentially all costs associated with the termination and the completion costs of the project, which are over and above the original contract price of OHL. The price at tender was just over £30 million. Further legal hearings are now expected to determine the exact amount which OHL will have to pay, but it could be up to an extra 60 million plus damages. The government is also looking to recover its substantial legal costs. The quantification of such losses will be a matter for further determination as what, at what is known as a quantum hearing in due course. But I think we may find that this judgment will eventually lead to the largest award of damages to the government of Gibraltar in its history. Today, all that is happening in London is that the ruling is being handed down and the judge will request the parties to attend before him in due course in order to make directions for the future conduct of the proceedings and orders arising from his judgment. The Chief Minister says he's worked closely with his predecessor, Sir Peter Caruana, and has this morning informed the opposition leader, Daniel Feetham, of the judgment. Mr. Picardo says this issue has been one of the most challenging aspects of the last 28 months in office and wants to thank his legal team for their hard work. The airport access tunnel project will go ahead. There's a pre-qualification phase so that the government can analyse what companies are able to pick up the project from where it was left off. But there is finally an end in sight to this long, long saga. The news of the success in the UK court proceedings relating to the airport tunnel project has been welcomed by the opposition, which joined the government in thanking the entire legal and technical team. It acknowledged the notification provided by the chief minister to the opposition leader and to the former chief minister, Sir Peter Caruana, immediately before the public announcement. The GST says that given the considerable amounts involved, both in terms of the liability the government could have faced in relation to the claim made against it by OHL and costs, the success in the litigation is to be welcomed by everyone in Gibraltar. Daniel Feetham adds the successful outcome entirely vindicates the action of the previous administration in terminating the contract with OHL. He commends the current administration in its vigorous defence of those actions. Mr. Feetham adds he now trusts the project, the GSD initiated when in government, and now supports in opposition as one which is essential to Gibraltar's future development, will progress to completion. The opposition says it will consider the judgment in detail. Earlier this week, WSRM Architects confirmed that a proposal to site the new national football stadium within a warehouse in the dockyard had been rejected by the government. GBC had obtained a copy of the plans and asked the company to comment. A spokesman told us the proposal was turned down because the stadium would not be served by three access roads, as Europa Point is. WSRM Architects was established in 1992 and has been responsible for or involved in many large-scale projects locally, including the formulation of several Gibraltar development plans. Its interest in the stadium project appears to have been sparked by the recent GBC Television Viewpoint program on the subject. 
while acknowledging that its proposal is just the proverbial sketch on the back of a cigarette pack, it considers it would be interesting to see whether a closer study might realize any merit behind the idea. Their proposal is to site the new stadium within one of the large warehousing areas in the dockyard, which it understands to be one of the key sites that may be handed over to the government under the Ministry of Defence land transfer agreements. The company believes it would be possible to fit the stadium within the existing perimeter stone walls of the warehouse, thereby preserving these historic walls, while achieving the required ancillary areas and meeting UEFA's other requirements. It says the design would send out a powerful message about Gibraltar and its unique and interesting history. Among the benefits of the location listed by WSRM are the accessibility of the location, which is within walking distance for a large part of the population, the fact that it's not within a tight urban or residential area, and that there is ample open area around the site itself. There's also plenty of public car parking spaces nearby. In addition, the company says the north-south orientation recommended by UEFA would be maintained. A WSRM director has confirmed that the proposal was rejected last week on the grounds that the stadium would not have three-axis roads, even though the architects claim it could have, one being Queensway, another the dockyard southern entrance or a new link road onto Rosia Road, and a third route, which would be for emergency vehicles only, along the tunnel linking the dockyard with the east side near the Both Worlds complex. Number six has told GBC that the matter of the new national football stadium is now with the Development and Planning Commission on the only application made by the GFA, which is for a stadium at Europa. Meanwhile, in answer to GBC questions, the government said WSRM's design was sent to them in an email as an unsolicited idea. It said it has received many such ideas for areas all over Gibraltar. Number six adds the GFA proposal is currently undergoing an environmental impact assessment. Former Employment Minister Louis Montiel has filed for a judicial review of his terms and conditions as a Gibraltar Development Corporation employee following the 2011 general election. Mr Montiel is arguing he should have been employed as a civil servant coming under the Chief Secretary and not under the now Minister Joe Bosano. The former Employment Minister is being represented by the leader of the opposition, Daniel Fitam. With the GDC and the current Minister for Employment, Joe Bosano, represented by the former GSD Deputy Chief Minister and PDP leader, Keith Asapardi QC. Hearing the case is the Chief Justice, Anthony Dudley. Mr. Montiel was a training monitor working for the GDC when he stood for election in 2007. He served for four years as Minister, but two months before the 2011 election said he wouldn't be standing again. During that time, the GSD government had taken the policy view that all GDC employees should be transferred to the civil service. Mr. Montiel wrote to the government and expressed his desire to be reinstated to his former role as training monitor. However, the new GSLP Liberal government decided that the GDC should be kept on and gave all employees the opportunity to transfer to the civil service if they wanted to. Mr. Montiel argues that he should have been given the same opportunity as every other GDC employee. He said remaining a GDC employee would place him under Joe Bosano, the new employment minister whom he had a difficult relationship with. He said being transferred to the civil service would grant him the safety net of coming under the chief secretary. He says a clear illustration of this was when he turned up to work on his first day and was told there was no work for his pay grade at the moment and was asked to man reception, a responsibility three times below his grade. Mr. Montiel believes this was a move intended to humiliate him. The GDC argues that Mr. Montiel was a GDC employee when he became an MP, and his reinstatement should follow accordingly. The case continues tomorrow. And Louis Montiel was a GDP employee when he became a government minister and therefore there is nothing compelling the current government to employ him as a civil servant. 
This is the submission made by Keith Asobaldi QC, who is representing the GDC in a court case where Mr. Montiel is seeking judicial review of his terms and conditions as an employee. Yesterday, Mr. Montiel's lawyer, Daniel Feetham, argued his client could claim a legitimate expectation to be transferred to the civil service upon his reappointment to the GDC, as all other GDC employees had been. But in his submissions, Mr. Asabardi said the GSLP Liberal Administration had reversed the GSD's policy to do away with the GDC. And in fact, the corporation now had over 100 employees. Mr. Asabardi said there was a witness statement from the head of HR, Brenda Kumbo, who said not all GDC employees had been transferred to the civil service. Mr. Asabardi said the claimant could have no doubt that the GSLP Liberals' policy was to keep the GDC because he was the employment minister when they made it clear in Parliament. He said Mr. Montiel was a GDC employee before his time as an MP, and there was no law which could compel an employer, i.e. the civil service, to take on an employee which wasn't theirs. He also said the former minister was given an offer of reinstatement ten weeks after the general election, which he believed was reasonable. Mr. Fitem is expected to reply to Mr. Asapardi's submissions, after which the Chief Justice will adjourn to consider his judgment. And we'll be back with more of this week's news after the break.